Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Hankook, we are talking about one of my absolute favorite subjects. Tires. Specifically, we're covering electric car tires. Now, you might think, it's a tire. Put it on a gas car, put it on an electric car, what does it matter? Well, there's some challenges when you slap regular tires on an electric car. Why? Because EVs are pretty heavy. They are super efficient, they're remarkably quiet, and they have boatloads of torque. So let's talk about how you create a tire to address each of these four challenges. Let's start with weight. These cars are heavy, and it's pretty easy to understand why. Say you want 300 miles of range. Well, that's about 70 pounds of fuel for a gas car, but it could easily be 1,000 pounds for the battery of an electric car. So even if you can save some weight with electric motors versus combustion engines, the overall car weight tends to be higher by about 20 to 30%. So you've got a lot of weight on the tire, and at the same time, you want to keep it as narrow as possible for aerodynamic reasons, since efficiency is critical with EVs. So that means you've got a bunch of pressure on a fairly narrow contact patch. Hankook says based on their own testing, if you compare the tread wear of the same tire put on a lighter combustion car versus a heavier EV, on the electric car the tire will wear about 20% faster. So what do you do? Well, you have to increase the stiffness of the tire. For example, Hankook says this tire has 25% higher lateral stiffness and 20% higher cornering stiffness versus their standard SUV touring tire. So think about what happens when you turn in. You're asking this tire to change direction and you have the heavy weight of the vehicle resisting that motion. So it wants to laterally stretch the tire. So you change the profile and rigidity of the sidewall, increasing the lateral stiffness, and in doing so you improve your steering response, because you don't have that slop when you turn in. Now, you might wonder, does this mean you'll lose comfort? Well, if you were to throw this on a lightweight combustion car, sure. The tire's stiff, so it doesn't match the application. You could say the same about taking a heavy truck's suspension springs and putting it on a car. The lighter car would ride way too stiff, but that doesn't mean when those springs are used on a heavy truck that that truck has poor ride quality. So think of this as matching the application. Can you use regular tires on a heavy EV? Sure, but you could be sacrificing steering response and handling. Now, as mentioned, more weight generally means more wear, so EV tires also use a stiffer compound to reduce the wear impact from higher weight. In addition, and this is something I'd actually already noticed from my own experience, dedicated electric tires tend to have a flatter contact patch for a given tire width, resulting in more rubber in contact with the road, helping to spread out the load and improve wear. Okay, so stiff tires, obviously important, but what's critically important for an EV is efficiency. Electric cars are crazy efficient, and because of this, seemingly small changes can make a big impact on range, and that's especially true for wheels and tires. For tires, this is all about rolling resistance. In other words, the energy lost as heat as the tire deforms moving along the road. To rate how well a tire performs here, we measure something called the coefficient of rolling resistance. Some simple math illustrates why this is such a big deal on EVs. Say, for example, we have a 4,000 pound car that's going to travel 200 miles, and we have two tire options for that car. One with a coefficient of rolling resistance of 0.01, a fairly normal car tire coefficient of rolling resistance, and one with 0.005, which would be a really, really good car tire. With some quick math, you can determine the tire with more rolling resistance causes you to use an additional 8 kilowatt hours of energy over the course of those 200 miles. Now, what if that car was gas versus electric? Well, taking efficiency into account, the gas car would need about 0.8 gallons of extra fuel to compensate for the tire selection, and the electric car would need about 9 kilowatt hours of extra battery to compensate for the tire selection. Now think about this from a design standpoint. If you're designing a car to run on a high coefficient of rolling resistance tire, adding a gallon to the fuel tank to maintain an equivalent range is no big deal. But adding 9 kilowatt hours of battery to an EV is a huge deal. That's easily a 10% addition to a modern car battery. So you need the space for it, the price increases significantly, and you're adding another 100 plus pounds of weight to the car versus just six for a gallon of gas. With this example, a simple tire choice could easily drop or improve your range by a good 30 miles. So for electric cars, tires make a huge impact on range, while for gas cars with big fuel tanks, you probably won't even notice. 
So how does Hankook improve the coefficient of rolling resistance on their tires? Well, a lot of it comes down to the magic of tire compounds, which is information that basically no tire company has ever been willing to share with me. Part of this is the process of vulcanizing the rubber and curing the tire. The more evenly you can cure the tire, the better the rolling resistance properties. Hankook says you can have up to a 10% difference in rolling resistance simply based on how you cure the tire. Also, in regards to the flatter contact patch that I mentioned, Hankook says their research shows there's not a significant correlation between the contact area and the rolling resistance. But if you can create a very even pressure distribution for the area that is in contact with the ground, you can improve the rolling resistance. Moving on to noise, noise is a really interesting subject because it's basically a battle that you can never win. If you make one part of the car quiet, now you notice the other parts more, even if the overall volume level is lower. This is what happens with electric cars, because electric motors are much, much quieter than combustion engines. According to Hankook, about 50% of the noise you hear in a gas car is the powertrain. In an electric car, that number is 15%. This is really interesting because I've had people ride in my car and say, wow, there's a lot of wind noise. Even though you can just open your glove box, pull out your sound meter, and naturally integrate into the conversation that by decibels, it's actually a very quiet interior. I'm fun at parties. So you eliminate a lot of noise with an electric powertrain, and quiet interiors are great. But now you also need to reduce wind noise and tire noise so that it doesn't stand out so much. So for tires, what can you do? Well, if you look on the sidewall here, you can see it says sound absorber, and there are both internal as well as external features on the tire to help reduce noise. One of the most prominent, of course, is this polyurethane foam insert within the tire. So as you're driving, you have a resonant noise generated from the tire contacting the ground. This resonance passes from the tire to the wheel, from the wheel to the suspension, from the suspension to the chassis, and then you perceive it within the cabin. What this foam does is essentially acts like a damper, so it dampens that resonant vibration generated, helping to prevent the noise from reaching the cabin. Hankook says depending on the tire size and road condition, this insert can have as much as a 9 decibel impact. And remember, a 10 decibel difference means you perceive the noise to be twice as loud. There are other features to reduce noise as well. Within the water channels, you can see this zigzag pattern or knurling. This helps break up and suppress the resonance generated within the groove. And Hankook says this alone is good for a 0.3 decibel noise reduction in a pass-by noise test. Another feature you can see on the summer tires are expanding lateral grooves. So each of these lateral grooves are a way for noise to break out from these center channels. So you'll notice on tires that have big tread blocks with large gaps in between them tend to be pretty loud tires. So here they're using expanding grooves, which start off small, to minimize how much noise breaks out while still allowing for water to escape. Finally, and this one I find the most fascinating, is multi-pitch sequencing. So at first glance, if you look at these tread blocks or pitches, it actually looks pretty consistent as you go around the tire. But if you actually measure them, you can see, okay, we've got 28 millimeters there, 22 millimeters there, 19 millimeters there, so there's actually a lot of variance in these tread block widths. This is intentionally randomized, so you don't have a consistent rhythmic nature to the tire pattern hitting the road surface and generating noise. Pretty wild, you can optimize the randomized nature of the pitch sequence to reduce overall noise. Now, I don't have a perfect example of an all-season tire with and without all of this technology tested back to back. But just for fun, I did measure the noise level at 60 miles per hour on the highway on a set of off-the-shelf summer tires with no internal foam versus these Ion All Seasons. And after multiple runs at 60 miles per hour, these tires average just over 3 decibels quieter. And keep in mind there are multiple sources of noise, powertrain, wind, tires, and I'm measuring total overall noise, not just tire noise. So just by switching tires, the overall cabin noise is three decibels quieter. Going back to our decibel scale, that means riding with the summer tires was about 25% louder. That's significant. Finally, and perhaps the greatest advantage that EVs have, they've got torque, and that torque delivery is nearly immediate. For accelerating, overall grip is obviously important to minimize wheel spin since you're putting down so much initial torque. And the tire's construction needs to be able to handle all of this torque. 
But when you really think about it, this ties in with the vehicle's weight as well. All cars need to be able to perform an emergency stop, so the tires need to handle maximum longitudinal grip, whether accelerating or decelerating. EVs tend to be heavier, so the overall force exerted on the tire is greater. Again, this means we need to improve the rigidity of the tire, in both the construction and the compound, especially when we're talking about performance tires for performance EV applications, like summer tires. Much of this rigidity comes from the internal construction of the tire, with jointless belts, and in the case of this summer tire, an aramid belt. Aramid has very little elongation, so as you're reaching higher and higher vehicle speeds, you have massive centrifugal forces on this tire. So Aramid helps maintain the shape of that tire, minimizing the increase in diameter. This is important for tires with high speed ratings, such as a Y grade. So if you look at this tire specifically, the Ion All Season, it has a UTQG rating of 600 for the wear rating, an A for the wet rating, and an A for the temperature rating. There's a 50,000 mile warranty, so it lasts a long time, has great wet grip, and solid durability. And Hankook's Ion Summer Tire has Europe's AAA rating, meaning the highest rating for rolling resistance, wet grip, and noise. And the Ion lineup covers the full range of conditions, with the summer and all season variants, as well as an Ion Winter Tire. I am a big fan of summer tires, so I hope to try those out once we get out of these colder months. All of this simply shows that if you design for it from the beginning, you can account for the challenges that EVs put on tires. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.